what makes this market so hard to like? On the one hand, many of the problems we've been holding us back, in some cases for years, are starting to resolve themselves, right? I mean, the U.K. just kicked the can down the road again on Brexit, uh, but maybe there's a resolution. The trade war with China is cooling, at least for the moment. The Fed's given us a much-needed rate cut. The job market's still strong. And so far, this earnings season is looking, I think, pretty darn well. I, let's say maybe it's looking not as bad as feared Naboth. You'd think that that would give us a pretty positive backdrop. But for every hurdle we overcome, there's a new one standing in front of us. As I mentioned at the top of the show, the stock market has been flooded with new supply thanks to all these IPOs. Like any other market, when supply overwhelms demand, it puts pressure on prices. On top of that, we have a tremendous amount of political uncertainty from impeachment to the 2020 election. And Wall Street hates uncertainty. We had a boatload of it. For weeks now, many investors have been freaking out about Senator Elizabeth Warren's new status as a Democratic frontrunner. She's the candidate who wants to crack down on the perceived excesses of big business. The stock market represents big business. It's easy to understand why money managers are worried. However, you, look, no matter how you feel about President Trump, Wall Street likes his economic policies, aside from the trade war. So for the next year, it wouldn't surprise me if the averages bounce back and forth Back and forth in response to the poet. I know that's a suboptimal situation. It's the last thing we want to worry about. It's Washington. We're trying to figure out companies. But this stuff is kind of nebulous. And it's very hard to look at with the kind of clinical detachment that you need to be a good investor. That's why tonight we do something different. We're going to go off the charts on a Monday with the help of Carly Garner. She's a brilliant technician. She's also the co-founder of the Carly Trading and the author of Higher Probability Commodity Trading to get a more quantitative, more empirical read on this market. Now, Garner points out that the S&P 500 hasn't made much progress since it peaked last year. After rocketing higher from late 2016 through early 2018, the market spent most of the last couple of years digesting those gains and no more. Lately, though, the S&P surged to new highs, and Garner's concerned, this is quite contrary to what I'm hearing, that we may be approaching a point where all the good news is baked in. More importantly, she thinks we're about to encounter some serious technical resistance here. When you pair that with the glut of new stock from the IPO deluge, which I've told you is not done, like you said, Peloton today, even though it's recommended by everybody, and the political headwinds, well, she sees a, let's say, not-so-pretty picture. Let's take a look. Why does she expect resistance? Take, this is a look at a very difficult uh, concept, but we're going to try to walk through it. This is uh, the weekly chart of the CBOE volatility index, the VIX for short, which is also known as the fear gauge, because it tends to do a good job of capturing the overall level of terror in the market. Technically, the VIX measures the volatility premium people are paying for S&P 500 options. It tends to go down when investors are complacent, and it goes up when they are afraid. See this? Is, you could argue, as a measure of complacency. Lately, the VIX has been pummeled. Uh, uh, but when, uh, Gar- what Garner likes in this chart is the Commodity Futures uh, Trading Commission's Weekly Commitments of Traders Report. That's the COT, okay? Which tells you uh, what certain types of investors are doing with the VIX futures. What we care about here is the large speculator category, money managers, because it can give us some insight into when a trade may be a too many right or it may be too Crowded. Keep that thought in your mind. Right now, the VIX future speculations are net short by about 155,000 contracts. Not far from what Garner would consider to be an overheated short trade at around 1,700, uh, 170,000 contracts. See, 170,000, we'll put it up here, okay? Let me keep all these. These are all important, so I, I don't want to. I know there's too much here, but this is really important because why? Well, why does it matter? Because in the past, both the uh, VIX and the S&P 500 have a habit of reversing. One speculator starts shorting the VIX futures too heavily. When the VIX spikes, the S&P tends to get crushed. All right. So uh, you can see that, in other words, if this were to go back up, then the S&P would go like that. All right. Now, how about the S&P 500 itself? Take a look at this longer-term monthly chart of the S&P 500 December E-mini futures. That's a key contract everybody watches who trades the futures. In the short run, Garner thinks bullish seasonal patterns and optimism should be able to carry us higher. But if we rally much further from here, the relative strength index, and that's down here, RSI, okay, uh, that's an important momentum indicator, will shift into overbought territory, suggesting that we'll be due for a pullback. Right now, the S&P is just above 3,000, okay? So keep this mind in mind. This is where it is, all right? 
Corners is expecting a ceiling resistance at 3030 or 3150, 3150. This is the appropriate ceiling. Uh, anywhere somewhere in between, maybe. Her focus is on the 3,060 to 3,090 area. It's possible to get there, uh, get a short squeeze here, okay? A kind of bull trap move that tricks you into thinking everything's okay. That's what some people thought was happening today. If that ceiling holds, Garner says you want to be prepared for a sell-off, possibly for a severe one. So in other words, if we can't take this out, she wouldn't be surprised if we get a pullback down to the S&P's long-term floor, Okay of the 2,500s, get this, it'd be a hideous move, but it wouldn't negate the bull market. However, if the S&P breaks below the long term, well, the Garner thinks a plunge under 2,000. Under 2,000 could be a real possibility. At the moment, though, she still considers that a pretty low probability outcome. So she thinks it goes to here, but if, it don't, it doesn't, if that doesn't hold, then she thinks it can go to here. That's a big decline. Then there's the monthly chart of the NASDAQ 100 of the tech-heavy index, made up of the 100 largest non-financial companies in the NASDAQ composite. At this point, the NASDAQ 100 has hit some pretty lofty levels. We're all the way up here, okay? Right now, the NDX is about 66 points away from 8,000, and Garner sees extreme resistance, the 8,100 level. What? I'm sorry, 8,180 levels, her resistance. Uh, But just like with the S&P, Garner believes there's a chance for a temporary probe above resistance that may lure in buyers. If that happens, 82.40 becomes the uh, ceiling. So in other words, we get some momentum players come in, uh, not the kind of buyers you want. Also, just like the S&P, the NASDAQ 100 is not yet excessively overbought, and that's down here, uh, according to the relative strength index. However, if it keeps climbing, we'll soon reach overbought territory. And then Garner expects this thing to roll over and roll over badly. How terribly could we be hit? In the normal ebb and flow of the market, she thinks we find a support uh, at 6930 down here. Uh, but that's down about 1,000 points from, from where we are. But it wouldn't shock her if we got a more serious correction that takes us down to the floor at 5910, 5,910. Well, this is, a, ladies and gentlemen, this is a 25% decline. Is Garner right? Honestly, I do not subscribe to her negativity. But you need to be aware that these bearish scenarios are on the table in a lot of people's heads. Here's the bottom line. The charts as interpreted by Carly Garner suggest that the averages could keep climbing for the next few weeks. But after that, she thinks we're in real trouble. And she recommends using any of the strength we're about to get to ring the register. My view, look, it never hurts to be a little cautious as we keep climbing. I think there's more to the bull market than Garner gives it credit for. Still, we need her perspective. She's been right on a lot of things. Because now things do start rolling over, you'll understand what the tech will say about the possible downside in front of us. Stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.